what exactly are Pokemon types? We know that there's 18 of them and they're the main crux of gameplay. It's rock, papers, and scissors, but a little bit more complicated and a lot cooler. Fire is weak to water, grass is weak to ice, all of that, and most of the type matchups make sense. Or at least they make sense in our heads because, well, we're so used to them. But what really makes a fire type a fire type? The ability to manipulate fire? Because a lot of other Pokemon that aren't fire type, well, they can easily learn fire type moves. What about the presence of fire on the body? Or a natural affinity to fire that no other type has? And what makes a bug type a bug type? Arthropod would be most people's answers, but that is not always the case. Look at Crustle, for instance, which is a crustacean, and Kingler, also a crustacean, both crustaceans. But one is a bug type and one is not, so what's going on? What makes one a bug type and not the other? How does a Pokemon gain a type, lose a type, and what does it have to do with their evolution and biology? Like, did Pokemon split into the 18 different types super early on or something, or is it just all one big coincidence? And how do Pokemon just suddenly change types when someone discovers a new type? Like, Clefable's now a fairy type, but it used to be normal and weak to fighting, but now it resists it, so what's going on? Well, let's dive in. What makes Charmander a fire type? Well, there's a simple solution. If something's on fire, it's a fire type. Its main property is fire, its biological specialty. Then with Charizard, its specialty is still fire, but its secondary specialty is flight, flying, creating winds, gusts, manipulating the wind. It's good at it, but not as good as it is with fire. If you reverse the typing of Charizard, I can tell you that it'd be a much different Pokemon. This is why the majority of dual type normal types have normal first. Like Pidgey, it's a normal bird, not a bird normal. Anyway, with the elemental types, you know, fire, water, electric, grass, all of that, well, it's certainly easy to explain. All the Pokemon that have that type, well, they specialize in it primarily. Like all fire type Pokemon specialize in fire, all grass type Pokemon specialize in, well, plants, I guess? They all have some plant-like quality to them anyway. Though, I do have a real nitpick with all the fungi Pokemon though. Why? Because they're all grass type, which makes literal no sense. Sure, you could say like, oh, fungi, they're not plants, but they're around grass. Well, if that's the case, then a lot of other Pokemon should be grass type too, mainly a lot of ground types and normal types, but fungi Pokemon, honestly, they should just be ground type because fungi, well, I mean, they're rooted in the ground and they suck up all the nutrients from the ground. So that makes a lot more sense to them being grass or even poison. You know, a lot of fungi are poisonous and they are decomposers. So they eat up a lot of dead things and they probably have a strong, you know, you, you could make sense of poison, right? A lot better than grass. At least I think so. Electric Pokemon always specialize in producing electricity, ice Pokemon with ice and also being resistant to the cold. Same with fire Pokemon and the heat. Rock type Pokemon are always encased with rocks or a hard material that comes close to it. So they're structurally hard Pokemon and steel is sort of similar. Most steel Pokemon are actually made out of some type of metal, whether that's iron, copper, mercury, it doesn't really matter. Though some Pokemon like Berserker do have a strong structure around their body that is just as tough as steel. Yeah, most steel and rock type Pokemon are just made out of what you would assume. Some have evolved to be just as tough as those materials on their own, becoming said type. What makes a ground type a ground type is first off its main element being the earth, mud, literally the ground, but also how its body is designed, very dry and often rough. Fighting is fighting because they specialize in, well, fighting. Dark is dark due to playing unfair, so I'd say that the dark type is actually a subset of fighting really. Ghost type Pokemon are usually thought of as being dead, but that's not true. It's all about having a connection to the realm of the dead, and this isn't that easily achieved. So it's a very specific type. Flying types can either fly or control winds and such. Really it should be called the wind type, but anyway, poison types are, well, venomous and or poisonous. It's pretty easy to explain. Psychic types are defined by their high intelligence and attacking using just the mind. You know, psychokinesis and all that stuff. Defying the laws of physics. Fairy types, on the other hand, are all about defying the laws of nature, doing things that not only stretch our reality, but go beyond our reality, magic to its purest form. I don't know, but to me I've always seen Psychic as the sci-fi type and Fairy as the fantasy type. Does anyone else feel me with that? Normal is a strange type, because honestly, what really counts as normal in this crazy world? Why is Mareep electric type, but Wulu not? Because Wulu does not specialize in any element? 
Isn't it kind of weird that Tauros can learn Fire Blast, Thunderbolt, and all of that, even if the stats it has makes those moves completely useless? Normal types have always been weird with just how many moves of different types they can learn. It's insane. Wait a second, could it be that normal types are, well, normal because they don't specialize in anything? They're not really excellent at something, but they're good at many things, like a jack of all trades, master of none. It's not about them being plain and boring, but rather the unlimited potential they all have inside of them. You know, just like us. Like a lot of people that you might look up to, well, they were once considered average and normal as well. And spoiler alert, most people are just average and normal. I would consider myself just average as well. You know, like, I don't have to be Gordon Ramsay to make myself a fancy meal, or be some film student or whatever to make interesting YouTube videos, and I'm just content with that. Really, the normal type should just be called the adaptive type or the regular type, or just not have a type whatsoever. But I guess normal already does that. You know, it's a placeholder for anything that's not too special or too fancy. Like, Arcanine is a firewolf, right? A really special firewolf. Super cool, but then Pyro is a fire lion, but it's also just, eh, it's a fire lion? Which to our standards would be very, very cool, but in Pokemon, Pyro is not 100% specialized in fire, it just primarily uses it. Almost as if, hmm, maybe Pyro is evolving to become a pure fire type? Hmm, maybe, 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 just maybe, originally all types were normal type. Think about it, that's why Arceus' main form is a normal type. You know, it's creating Pokemon in its image. Normal being the most primal, raw, natural type that gets molded by the planet into all the other types. Mew being there is a bit confusing, you know, considering it's a psychic type and the ancestor of all Pokemon. But who knows, maybe the Mew that are around today, well, they just happen to all be psychic. And the Mew that was actually, you know, the original ancestor of all Pokemon was just the normal type. You know, certainly makes sense because if we're gonna assume that Mew was sent by Arceus, which I've discussed in the video uh, previously, by the way, if you wanna watch that, but yeah, I'm just adding that onto the theory real quickly. You know how like a lot of Pokemon can learn moves that are completely outside of their types? Well, that probably has to do with how close they are to their, you know, ancestral type and how many different type moves that they can actually learn. Well, it depends on how much they still retain of that original type. Huh, you know, now I certainly get why a lot of mon games have Beast as a stand-in type for normal, because, well, that's the most basic you're gonna get for a Beast, the Beast type. Then there are Dragon types, which are somewhat similar to normal being able to learn many, many moves, but instead of being okay at everything, it's better at everything, primarily manipulating the elements around them, and that seems to be the biological basis for this type. I would say that it's being Scaly and Reptilian instead, but, you know, Altaria, Noivern, Gudra, Exeggutor, and even Namphoros. If one can master the elements, it has the possibility of being a Dragon type. It just happens to be that mostly Reptilian-like bodies tend to be the best of this, apparently, and since elements, you know, bring life to the world, and ice is cold, devoid of life, it makes sense that they're weak to it. Bug, however, what the heck does Bug type even mean? Clearly it doesn't mean Arthropod, since not all Arthropod-like Pokémon are Bug-type, and not all Bug-type Pokémon are Arthropods. You have Shuckle, which is some type of mold, and you have Shelmet, which is a snail, a gastropod. Honestly, it's a huge mess. You have Pokémon like Clawitzer, Crawdont, Kingler, Kabutops, which you would all assume are Bug-types, but they're not. And then you have Crossel and Armaldo, which are Bug-types. So. What, what, what? Do bug types have to be visibly buggy or something? Like, does their main element need to be bug? Because if that's so, then why aren't Trapinch and Vibrava bug types? But something that looks as human as Levani is for some reason? Uh, it's just... I don't get it, it hurts my brain. Is it maybe the environment they live in, since Crustle doesn't primarily live in the sea like Kingler, and that's why it's a bug type? Well, that's not it either, because Armalo also lives in the water, a Rockwinid too. This includes most Arthropod-like Pokemon, like Gligar, Flygon, so why couldn't those have just been bug type as well? Maybe the bug type is just a placeholder? Like, Gligar is a Pokemon that specializes in the air and the ground, so it's no longer a bug type. But that doesn't explain why Trapinch isn't a bug type as well, and why a lot of these crustacean Pokemon aren't bug type either. And the thing with a lot of these crustacean Pokemon is that they're not even in the bug egg group. 
Except Crustle. Uh, it's Crustle again. Of course it's Crustle. Maybe it's an evolutionary adaptation of sorts, but also a placeholder at the same time? Like, Kingler doesn't need the bug typing anymore, so it evolved to be a pure water type? In that case, that would mean that just like normal, Bug is a deep, old ancestral type. Maybe one of the very first natural types, just like real life arthropods. They're old. Real old. Old as Older than most groups of animals, therefore it's hard to get rid of through evolution, and that's why most arthropod-like Pokémon are indeed the bug type. The bug type is the only type in the entire game that seems to have such an emphasis on the Pokémon's biology rather than what they specialize in. So a bug Pokémon, like Gligar, which begins to specialize in both the air and the ground, well, it loses said bug typing. Drapion is a Pokemon that evolves away from the bug typing because it's found a new specialty. And since bug type is a primal type, this can be explained. But what about Pokemon gaining new types like Clefable becoming Fairy and Magnemite gaining Steel? Were these Pokemon always these types? Because yeah, I can buy a researcher suddenly just discovering a new type. Sure, that makes sense. Researchers in real life discover all kinds of things on a daily basis. But what's up with Clefable suddenly just resisting fighting? Perhaps new species are being discovered and they're taking over the older ones because they're more better suited to our environment? Well, maybe, but when we look at regional variants, you know, even a slight type change makes a Pokemon look different. Well, okay, what if they are becoming extinct because of their typing, and they just instantly retaliate by forming new types or something? Or maybe Clefable just really respects the art of Pokemon battling, and as soon as it heard that it was a fairy type, it was like, oh, okay, I'll just start taking close combat a little bit better now, trainer, just for you. Nah, I doubt that. I guess the realistic option is that Game Freak just changed things, and there is not really any lore that needs to be explained with that. But, you know, I, I like to dig into things that don't really matter because I've got to make videos. So, you know, let's just say it's an alternative universe. After all, Gen 6 is set in a different universe. We've known this since Oras. So not only are we in the Mega Evolution universe now in Gen 6 and 7, but also the Fairy type universe, which also happens to be in Gen 8 as well and probably will be afterwards. And they just so happen to be discovered there. But the type matchups still work the way they do. But before the researchers found out, uh, Clefable probably still resist its fighting type and all of that. Cause come on, do you really think Pokemon are gonna just wait to hear the rules of Pokemon battles? I doubt it. I guess you could also just say, oh, it's Ultra Space again. There's a universe where Gardevoir is a fairy type along Psychic, and one where it's just Psychic, same with Magnemite, set in the, let's call it, Gen 1 universe, where it's a pure electric type. And the Steel and Dark types just don't exist in the Gen 1 universe. Which, yeah, okay, alright, I'll buy it. It's certainly good of Game Freak that they introduced multiverses, huh? Because, well, it certainly explains all these lore inconsistencies, and, uh, if there's one thing I know about Game Freak is that, uh, they don't try to keep their lore consistent. <laughs> but why are certain types weak to another? What makes a bug type strong against Psychic? Well, luckily for me, there's already lots of videos on that topic, uh, which you could watch instead, but we're not gonna focus on that. Instead, we're gonna do some type of, like, quick lightning round, like, which type matchups make sense and all, you know, considering we're on the, uh, subject of, uh, Game Freak kinda screwing up a little bit, so let's go. Something that's been bugging me for a while is, why do Fighting and Fairy resist Bug? Because it's not like Bug was ever a really strong type. Sure, there were some strong Bug types introduced in Gen 5, and I've seen some people talk about, like, that's why Fairy resists Bug. Like, it's as if Bug type itself needed a nerf, come on. Like, Fighting was like, okay, whatever, it doesn't make much sense, but Fairy was like a big middle finger to bug type for no reason. Honestly, bug should just be neutral against them and also gain an immunity or resistance to psychic. Why? Well, bugs are pretty stupid. Uh, they're not widely known for their intelligence. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of smart bugs and arthropods, but compared to many animals, yeah, they're not really up there. Psychic attacks the mind, and what mind is there if you're a bug? Well, not much, so therefore immunity slash resistance. Speaking of fairy, it should be weak to ice. Why? Well, same reason dragon is. Magic is life, and what is the void of life? The cold. It kills the warm, fuzzy feeling of magic. And finally, how does fire resist fairy? Because dragons are associated with spewing fire, and fairy is strong against dragons, so realistically, it should just be neutral. Outside of that, I can't really think up of any other type matchups that don't make sense. But maybe you do. Let me know in the comment section down below. You know, 
algorithm and all. Before I go, I want to give out a massive thank you to my assistant professor and lecturer patrons, Ty Burns, Michael Picciarelli, Delta Majora, and Gwen Joy. Y'all are the best as always, and thank you for the support. And with that being said, I hope y'all have a good day, night, or morning, and as always, take care.